Today is a very special day. It is. It's a very special day. It is the 40th anniversary of the exploding whale down in Florence, Oregon, when a dread uh, uh, sperm whale it washed up on shore. And the Oregon Highway Department decided they'd use dynamite to blow it up. Well, <laughs> that was a great idea until blubber started flying everywhere. And it, uh, th that explosion threw guts and chunks of the whale 800 feet up in the air and uh, look at the cars over the 800 the feet cars. away. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, that was a big piece of blubber landed on it. Well. That was 40 years ago. Paul Lindman was the reporter. And Doug Brazil was the photographer. He was the one who caught all of this on camera. And we're going to talk to Doug right now. Doug, so take us back. Go back 40 years ago and tell us about that whole situation and what you remember. Well, it was really kind of bizarre, Helen. Uh, you have to realize that uh, we were told by the news director that we had a story developing on the Oregon beach where they had a dead whale and the Department of Transportation wanted to blow it up. <laughs> he decided that was a pretty interesting story and put us on a little private plane and sent Paul and I, rookie reporter, photographer down there to the Florence beach to check it out. And when that whale blew up, well, yeah, there was, the, there was the big countdown, a typical explosion of 3, 2, 1, and then the thing went off. And, of course, Paul and I were rolling film, and uh, it was film in those days, Dave. And <laughs> we were looking up in the sky at maybe not 800 feet, but there were pieces of blubber that were the size of, well, you saw it, the size of a car roof that were flying around. And they went over the top of us and then sprayed this horrible mist over everything, <laughs> including us, the camera, and it smelled <laughs> Horrible. Yeah, I was going to say, so yeah, describe the smell. And then didn't you end up smelling like that for the rest of the day? And Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we had to stay down there while they finished cleaning up the rest of the pieces and then, you know, bulldozing them into the hole, as it were. And, of course, this we just reeked of this stuff. And I, how do you describe dead whale smell? I mean, it's the worst possible smell you can imagine. Then we had to get back in this airplane and then fly back to Portland. And I swear the poor pilot was about as sick as you could possibly get. <laughs> now, now, Doug, uh, we were talking this morning in, in remembering this story. The, the whale blowing up as it did, was it because there was too much dynamite or not enough? Well, that's a question for the engineers. I mean, it looked to us like they, they used enough to get most of it done, but the idea was, according to the engineer, was to try to bring it into small enough or break it up into small enough pieces so seagulls and other critters would take it away. Well, as you can tell, that didn't work. <laughs> uh, uh, Paul has mentioned this quite a bit, Paul Lemon, and I'm wondering if, if you're equally surprised at how, how long this story has lived. It is, it is uh, an international story. Yeah, it is, Dave. Um, when we did the story and got it on the air finally, we walked away from that story and felt that we'd never see it again. And then suddenly, 20 years later, practically, Dave Barry wrote about it and I thought it was an incredibly interesting piece. He thought it was the funniest story he'd ever heard. And so there we were, and then it hit the internet, and that's history. <laughs> and your history, too, as well. Yeah, you're down in history. Right. <laughs> well, you're, you're in the history in book. In the history book, is yeah, what as she well means. as the history. Yeah. Yeah, you're well, Doug, thank you so much for joining us this morning and taking us back 40 years. That let was me, fun. Let me ask you very quickly, Absolutely. do you ever once in a while still smell that smell? Thankfully, it's gone. But, uh, yes, every once in a while you remember how bad it was. <laughs> and it, it was bad, Dave. Right, very good. Thank you. Good Doug, to see you, thank Doug. Thank you Thanks. so much. Thanks for joining I us. I've yep. experienced that kind of smell as he describes it. You know, having a cat box that's yeah. overly full <laughs> doesn't bother you anymore, does it? You know, I, I can handle I, I that. I don't think any scent could bother you. I had well blubber all over me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. It is a dynamite story, <laughs> probably the most watched news story anywhere in the world. Of course, we're talking about the exploding whale. Did you know it aired for the very first time 40 years ago today? K2's Anita Kase talked to the reporter and the photographer near. They're both surprised, probably, that people are still talking about this. Absolutely, they are. Paul Lindman and Doug Brazil were the crew on this, and they covered it on TV, put it on TV, and thought that would be the end of it. But little did they know it would go on to be one of the most viewed stories of all time. That never gets old, does it? That's an eight-ton whale blown to smithereens on the beach in Florence in 1970. But a half-ton of dynamite, 20 cases, was not nearly enough to get rid of the already dead Pacific gray whale. Instead of exploding into tiny pieces that seagulls would eat, 
That was the original plan. The chunks were so large that they smashed the roof of a car. Paul Lindman and photojournalist Doug Brazil were a quarter mile from the blast, but still had to run to escape the flying blubber. But what they could not escape and what you can experience just watching this, that is the smell. I can still conjure it up 40 years later. If I think about it, I can still smell that smell. Um, I was wearing the, the classic uh, beige trench coat at the time, and after it went off, I looked down and it was pink uh, from blood and oil and blubber. So it came down as this oily rain on your jacket and everything. It was horrible. And the smell was, yeah, just sickening. The smell was so bad that when we flew back to Portland, the pilot got sick in our, on our aircraft. Lindman says people around the world still contact him about this story. He wrote a book about it, and it's been on 14,000 or more different websites. Now, I found this interesting. The story got some national attention in 1970. ABC News aired it, but it didn't really take off for about 20 years. That's when Pulitzer Prize winning columnist Dave Barry wrote about it. He says it's the funniest mm -hmm. story that he's ever heard. And then, of course, the Internet now. People can watch it over and over, yeah, over and, and over, over again. again. Absolutely. And, and the folks out there on the beach, they thought it was a good idea. <laughs> <Yeah. that. laughs> Mm, Not so much. So. It's right. a good book, too. Oh, good to it's know. Fantastic. Right. Anita, thanks. I cannot tell you the number of times I've been asked about this particular story. We are celebrating an anniversary at K2 today, the 40th anniversary of one of the most talked about news stories, not just in K2 history, but the world. It is. K2's Anita Kasey is here. People just cannot get enough of the exploding whale. It's actually one of the top five most viewed videos of all time. They think more than 400 million people have watched it. And for two journalists who wrote and shot it, it is hard to believe people are still talking about their story 40 years later. That's the infamous dead whale being blown up on the beach in Florence. It was supposed to explode into tiny pieces. Seagulls would eat, but 20 cases of dynamite? Not enough for the eight-ton whale. Chunks showered down, flattening the roof of a car and sending reporter Paul Lindman and photojournalist Doug Brazil running. Now, at the time, Lindman was just 23 years old and had made a name for himself early on by doing hard-hitting stories not these kind. And I was getting good assignments. And so when they asked me to go to Florence to cover the disposal of a whale, I went, oh, wait a minute. I'm boy wonder here. Uh, I do bigger stories, send somebody else. And they said, they're going to use dynamite. And I said, OK, let's go. And there were pieces the size of, well, appropriately enough, a car roof that were flying over our heads. And so Paul and I both looked at ourselves and said, we got to get the camera and the tripod and, and get the heck out of here, because the stuff was making an arc right over our top it was incredible. The story went on to make national news, but really didn't explode, if you will, until a Dave Barry column in the 1990s. Even now, Lindman says he constantly gets calls and emails about this. Lindman did let us in on a little secret today. It's something that has not really been talked about. This story almost did not make it on TV. There was a slight, shall we say, oops that happened. We're going to tell you what that is at 6 o'clock. Not and, so slight. Yeah. And you're exactly right. Uh, you know, Paul actually wrote a book about this, yes. too. And I love to tease him that this is his claim to fame. And he doesn't want it to be. <laughs> oh, yeah, so. He enjoys it a bit, though. Yeah. Oh, a little bit. A lot of people ask him about it. Thank you, Nita, very much. Well, yesterday marked the 40th anniversary of one of the most bizarre events in Oregon history that has become one of the most talked about news stories ever. And blubber goes everywhere. An eight-ton whale washed ashore in Florence, Oregon. And someone came up with an idea for how to get rid of it, stuff it with dynamite, blow it up, and then let the seagulls eat the remains. Well, that was the plan, but it didn't quite work out that way. The blubber flew off in huge chunks, big enough to damage nearby cars. And for the two former K2 journalists who shot it, it's hard to believe people are still talking about their story 40 years later. And I was getting good assignments. And so when they asked me to go to Florence to cover the disposal of a whale, I went, oh, wait a minute. I'm boy wonder here. Uh, I do bigger stories, send somebody else. And they said, they're going to use dynamite. And I said, OK, let's go. And there were pieces the size of, well, appropriately enough, a car roof that were flying over our heads. And so Paul and I both looked at ourselves and said, we got to get the camera and the tripod and, and get the heck out of here, because the stuff was making an arc right over our top. It was incredible. And they tell us you don't want to know what it smelled like. Well, it has become one of the most viewed videos ever seen roughly 400 million times.